Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a like, by leaving a comment, or by subscribing if you have not already done so. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is going to be an explanation video. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are waking up right now wondering what in the actual fudge is happening with the cryptocurrency Markets, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Ethereum continue to fall, crashing more than 7%. I just had a discussion with a number of friends. Uh, what appears to be going on? This seems to be a very coordinated effort uh, by authorities, by governments, what have you, uh, behind the scenes and in front of us to actually make the price of the cryptocurrency market go down. So... Uh, one of the major news stories, of course, right now is that the, the market is dropping. It says Ethereum resumes decline. What could trigger drop below $2,000? Bitcoin and Ethereum breakdown continues altcoins in red too. I also saw a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, it's definitely noise, not even news. Uh, about Dogecoin dropping as well, simply because of what happened during the NASCAR event. I explicitly do not believe that that had any actual bearing on the actual price of Dogecoin and the entire cryptocurrency market, it's mainly because of Bitcoin's magnet. So here's the first reason as to why Bitcoin has dropped in price and has taken the entire market down with it. Once again, it appears to me that this is all coordinated. All this news came out within the last hour. It is, it is, it's, it fits too nicely together to be uh, random or haphazard or whatever the case might be. It says China's third largest bank, has banned its customers from interacting with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, leading to massive price drops. We've seen before in the past that nearly every single time that some news comes out of China regarding the cryptocurrency market, our prices drop every single time. I understand that China is a, is a big player in the financial world, but the fact that this happens every single time just seems to be, once again, uh, far too coincidental uh, for me, just kind of seeing it this way. It says Bitcoin's price has dumped to a two-week low of just over $32,000 as more negative news has emerged from China. This time, one of the largest state-run banks has reportedly prohibited its clients from dealing with any digital assets. According to a report from the 21st of June, the Agricultural Bank of China has published a statement outlining a ban that will prohibit its customers from doing any business with cryptocurrencies, the third largest bank in China. It's worth noting that the Agricultural Bank of China is also one of the largest banks in the world in general. Clients' accounts will be terminated immediately if the bank discovers that they have had any interaction with Bitcoin and other digital assets. This is coordinated. There's no way that this is not in some way set up to make sure that the market falls or that it scares people out of the market. The bank also plans to report all suspicious transactions to relevant authorities in a timely manner. Here's the actual article right here. I cannot read this, but this is the article that was linked to what we were just talking about, about the third largest bank in China uh, banning. I mean, what a way to scare people. Because what happens is you may think that, oh, well, they're, they're only banning it for one bank. The fear then pushes out even further because people go, well, if the third largest bank can do it, why not the second? If the second can do it, why not the first? If the third can do it, why not the fourth? It, will every other bank also be uh, under this scrutinized level of whatever within the cryptocurrency space, especially within China, because people are only allowed to hold and buy cryptocurrencies through over-the-counter markets. They have like actual physical places where you have to go and show your identification to say that you're holding cryptocurrencies, which is also being cracked down on as well. At the same exact time, once again, um, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get more into that as we actually go along. The second part of why prices are down today, it says Bitcoin's hash rate has fallen to its lowest level since early November as mining operations in China start unplugging. Bitcoin's network hash rate, a measure of its computational horsepower, has slumped 46% since its peak level in mid-May. According to BitInfo charts, Bitcoin's hash rate is currently at 91.2 exahashes, close to half of the 171 exahashes 
posted just six weeks ago. So the news that we had for those of you who are not here the last three weeks, uh, China is on some type of a crusade, if you will, uh, to ruin the cryptocurrency market in their own way. I think a lot of governments, now this is my opinion, I think a lot of governments have come to the conclusion that Bitcoin is actually a threat. And I don't mean that once again in some sort of like, yeah, we're the, we're the powerful ones. It's in a no. Like we've had a lot of reports from governments and world banks basically stating if this succeeds and then if there is a, a market crash of some sort because of Bitcoin's volatility, it will bring down the economy of the entire world. So I think we have a lot of uh, first movers in the first of all, the, the, the idea also is don't forget that China is also and has created their own digital currency. They want that to be used more than Bitcoin. And I told you all this before that this was going to happen. Like we are, we, we are currently witnessing a, a digital battle that's happening around us because, you know, the, the Internet is flowing through our heads. Uh, the idea is that we don't want people to want to use Bitcoin. We did not create Bitcoin. We do not control Bitcoin. We do not go. We, we, we do not know where Bitcoin transactions are going. We have to make sure that our citizens are not using this thing. What can they use? Let's create our own digital currency like their government did. They're having lotteries. For those of you who weren't here, the Chinese government is having lotteries all the time, giving away millions of dollars worth of this currency. It gets people into the idea of it, more comfortable with the idea of having a digital currency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that we're seeing, and even more so depending on how, how hard you want to put your tinfoil hat on, uh, a lot of people think that this is not only coordinated to, being, to bring Bitcoin's price down because the government there is also trying to buy, what that's basically it there, there is no real second part it's it's just more of a uh it's clear that bitcoin is going to make it it's clear that bitcoin is going to survive it's clear that bitcoin has captured the imagination and minds of hundreds of millions of people around the world and one easy way that you get people to stop wanting to use it is by doing stuff like this um the other part being is that the once again china has dominated the news for a very long time as far as uh hash rate news this isn't new this has happened multiple times before and i mean multiple like this is this is at least the 15th time that this has happened over the last five couple of years but it has a very profound effect on the market because the the hash rate power and how high the hash rate is has a very positive effect on the uh, strength of Bitcoin's network. So the more machines you have, the stronger it is. The less machines you have, you know, the more of a risk that there is of someone hacking it. That's not really a, a risk per se. I'm air quoting uh, so much anymore. But of course, the idea is that if Bitcoin's mining power loses steam, well, therefore, the price will also lose steam. And it's kind of a ridiculous, weird, self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will. So that's the second thing. The third part, the Ministry of the Interior of the Islamic Republic of Iran has blocked the activities of the Iran blockchain community or the IBC, but the association claims they still haven't received direct notice. Uh, this is this is a very weird one, simply because we've had news over the last couple of weeks that I, I believe it was Iran, I believe it was them, that they made uh, mining an industry within the country, but we still receive tiny reports over and over that actual, not ownership of cryptocurrency, but everything else kind of surrounding it is, is kind of getting the, the ban hammer. I don't know if that's an actual phrase that people use. I used to use it uh, when I played cards, but it's kind of this like, uh, um, you can do this, but not that, 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 and that. Governments are, are really clamping down hard because uh, any indications that they gave before that they would allow like a bit of leeway, you know, if you're a cryptocurrency company, kind of do what you want and just, you know, uh, r respond to us when we ask you questions is quickly fading. Once again, we are seeing the, the end of fiat currencies. That is not a whatever. It is a, we, we, we're seeing that the overprinting and the over leveraging and the, the massive debt that these governments are in uh, will not be paid back. Their local currencies and fiat currencies are not going to spring back and, you know, become stronger than ever. They're not going to change their economic policies. And it's really a, um, it's a situation where they've been in power for so long, they just assumed that nothing would really change that. And now you have this digital currency and digital currency space that's kind of knocking on their door saying, you're garbage. Uh, I can do it a lot better mathematically, which is also one of the reasons why a lot of people trust Bitcoin is because it's math. It's not, it's not a government saying, well, you know, for the next 10 years, we'll have this policy and then they change it on the 11th year to something horrible. No, we, can, we, 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 we know exactly what Bitcoin is going to do at what time, on what date because of math. That's the third news. And the fourth negative thing that came out, is, it says it up here, this came out one hour ago. They all came out at the exact same time. TSB, a British bank, 
is planning to ban cryptocurrency purchases due to fraud concerns. The company reported an alarming number of fraudulent transactions on cryptocurrency purchases. Reportedly, transactions involving Binance, the cryptocurrency exchange behemoth, are involved in two-thirds of these fraud reports. A Binance representative denies these claims and said the exchange deals with compliance uh, like they like these complaints in a very uh, complaints in a very serious manner. Uh, backing it up, Binance is one of the, if not the largest cryptocurrency exchange on the planet. It's between them and Coinbase. I believe Coinbase has more users because Coinbase is very user friendly. But Binance, as far as numbers, Binance the behemoth, as it says in the actual thing. For those of you who do not know, governments do not like, do not like, do not like Binance. Binance is one of the very few companies that has kind of set themselves up where they need to be set up so that they're compliant in those lands, but they haven't at all really explicitly bent the knee to other countries, basically saying, I'm sorry, we'll do exactly what you want us to do, which is why it was a very big deal when they created Binance US. So the idea that, of course, you know, all the fraudulent stuff has to be coming from Binance is probably a huge load of nonsense. It's just another way for these banks who are, the, the, these banks are becoming hyper irrelevant. We no, no, we no longer need to have a bank account. Even if cryptocurrencies did not exist, which they already do, we do not need the old banking system. Like no part of it actually has to exist. We've gone over this before with stable coins. What's the point of you holding the US dollar or the British pound when you can hold Tether? And I say Tether or the, even the other US dollars, that the, the, the other digital currencies, because your bank account is going to get you 0.05% return per year, whoop the freaking do, while the stable coin will get you 7 to 14% per year. There's no reason to have any part of the old system, and they're clinging on as desperate as they possibly can, and this is why they keep saying, banning, banning crypto purchases? Wouldn't it make more sense to ban fraudulent-looking uh, deposits to your bank account from said illicit place? Why would you ban the actual purchase of a cryptocurrency? The cryptocurrency has done nothing wrong. It's the idea that the person who has purchased a cryptocurrency has done something illicit and therefore when they sell back into pounds or US dollars, well, then you can red flag it and say, well, you just cashed out $1.9 million in eight days. Where did that money come from? So this is another bucket of nonsense. That's a nice way of, of kind of saying it. This is not the first bank and they will not be the last to announce that they're banning cryptocurrency purchases or deposits or whatever or dealing with cryptocurrencies because of fraud. It's nonsense. If you actually look at the numbers once again, just complete logic. This is why I love the internet. If you look at what banks do all the time when it comes to actual fraud and money laundering, someone using Binance to make $5,000 has nothing to do with banks laundering billions of dollars. Have you seen, there was a report last year, I, I'm not sure if it was JP Morgan Chase, uh, there was some major bank who got caught uh, laundering gold on a boat, like an actual gigantic boat, huge uh, gigantic bars of gold, uh, they got caught and they, they, were, they, they were fined, what was it, like $15 million? So anyway, the point is, um, that seems to be the bucket. I know it's four things, but that's four things that came out within the last hour, and they seem to be logical as to why the cryptocurrency market would have fallen. I logically think that the two things about China probably had the largest impact, uh, hopefully, in the future. I, I would honestly love, and I said this years ago as well because it keeps happening over and over, I would love if China just banned it, like banned it completely. Get out of our market. Make it so that no one can mine cryptocurrencies, ban it. Make it so that no one can hold cryptocurrencies, ban it. So that we never have to mention that country once again because it keeps happening over and over. The really weird part is that, of, 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 of course, the government's doing this on purpose. So that's all that news. Let's move on. The next thing also has a slight twinge that could have possibly had something to do with it, but I still explicitly believe that it's just the first two news stories that we had. Uh, we've been getting this news a lot from other countries as well. Um, I'll read through it for a quick second and tell you why it's completely wrong. European Central Bank Executive Board member Fabio Panetta has argued that a digital euro offers superior privacy protections than privately issued stablecoins. That's a lie. Panetta criticized the profit motive of private firms 
emphasizing it is in their commercial interest to harvest masses of data on their users. He said, we are not like private companies. That's a lie. The board member told the Financial Times, we have no commercial interest in storing, managing, or monetizing the data of users. That is also a lie. Why would you lie? We know that government, the entire point of having a digital euro, a digital dollar, a digital yen is not to make purchases easier. It is not to make life easier for the consumer. It is to collect data. Governments explicitly believe, whether they be right or wrong, that they are yearly missing out on billions of dollars in tax revenue. The entire idea of digitizing currency is to make sure that every transaction is followed. They will know what you buy, what you bought, when you bought it, how much you bought it for. Every single piece of information will be collected. This is, I mean, this is, this is already happening now. So it's not like, I, I, once again, I don't understand the, the, the point of lying. When you tap your phone, when you tap your card, there's a time signature. It is owned by you. You put your number in. You gave your signature for the purchase. They know where you were, at what time, what you bought, how much it cost. Everything is, of course, being followed. So the idea that they're not doing this, why, why do it then? Why not bring us back to a complete paper standard to make sure that we have actual private transactions? When you are holding a $50 bill or a 50-euro bill and you go into a store and you hand that to someone and you purchase something, that's private. There's, there's no trace of you having purchased anything. You gave them money. They gave you money back. You walked out of the store. The other part, um, as, as, as far as like actual uh, privacy protection, you are now, I'm not saying, I am not saying in any way, shape or form that people or companies who have stable coins are, you know, the, the angels of the cryptocurrency space. But, you know, logically, you have more of a, of a right to be able to trade on a blockchain or any other. Uh, there, there are many decentralized stable coins as well that have no actual owner and or headquarters for them. I feel like you'd have more of a chance of having private transactions using those stable coins or using Bitcoin or Litecoin or any other cryptocurrency that isn't directly tied to your name or to your card as opposed to a government mandated central bank digital currency because the way that they're going to try and do it, it's it's basically the way that we have payments now except that we're going to have like fancy beautiful colors on our screen when we lift them up and go hey I'm I'm paying in this currency. So uh, the the move that we are seeing from the the World Bank, the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements and the uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund is quite strong. They keep saying the exact same news over and over, but it does have some type of an effect on our market. That's just the way that things are going to go. It's basically the, the idea that we don't need Bitcoin. We don't need decentralized cryptocurrencies because when we give you our digital coin, it'll be the exact same thing. You won't be traced. You won't be followed. You'll be as protected as before. This is the, 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 These are all lies. Why would you make it so that we have something digital? that will be explicitly traced. There will not, I, I assure you this, when we have digital currencies everywhere, there will not be a red button on your phone that says go private. You and I both know that. All these transactions that are going to be happening are made digital so that at the end of the year, they can say, hey, you were supposed to pay 8,000 in taxes. However, we see that the other transactions you did on PayPal, that you did here, that you did on Binance, that you did in this store, that you sold this thing that you did not tell us about, you should have paid 1,600 extra and now you're going to be fined. That's the reason for it. That's why all of this is happening. So anyway, that's that news also from one hour ago. Doesn't it seem a little weird that all this news keeps coming out at the exact same time on the exact same days? within minutes of each other, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that's odd. And then our market falls, uh, almost said coinc coincidingly, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I think this is also maybe the exact same thing. Yep, Dutch finance minister calls for crypto regulations. The finance minister of the Netherlands thinks regulating cryptocurrency is a more effective way of tackling the growth in the digital currency adoption in the country, I'm sure. Tracking, making sure you have control over everyone and everything. Why do you think there's such a huge push towards regulating cryptocurrency exchanges? Because you cannot regulate the cryptocurrencies themselves. You can't go to Bitcoin and say, hey, uh, we realize you're not compliant. Um, here's a form. If you could fill this out for us, uh, that'd be really good for us and get it back to us in about 24 hours. That sounds good. No, you can't do that. You can't do it for Litecoin. You can't do it for Ethereum. You can't do it for any of these coins. You can talk to the people who like help to work on the code for these things, but you can't change the, 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 the algorithm and the code yourself. 
you governments can't even governments can't even get 90 percent consensus within their own uh, parliaments now imagine governments trying to get 90 percent consensus on the bitcoin network anyway so um i hate the word fud can't stand it but this is this is what it is it's uh it's a constant non-stop avalanche of negative news on our market that makes it end up going uh down what is this one? Ah, yeah. So anyway, I guess that's all the negative news. Yeah. Let's move on. Next up, in also unsurprising news, because that's how the world works. After six months of testing, a bank in Switzerland is set to offer Bitcoin trading and custody service to its clients. Uh, also, keep this in mind as well. This is why I, 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 I think the daily news of the cryptocurrency space is very good to put things into perspective. Every single day, regardless if our prices are up or down, it is either a bank or an institution who announces that they are getting into the cryptocurrency space. This is daily. This is not every other day. It is not once a week. This is why, and I, I don't have it in this video. Uh, if you look at what the analysts are saying, even during the drop today, many of the analysts, especially Plan B, they, they sit back and they go, no, like our trend is still intact. We are still in, and no, it doesn't seem like it, but we are still in a, in a bullish movement uh, once again, keeping in mind that we were at $3,000 this time last year, uh, the movement of money into the space is still accelerating. Even when we had news of our previous drop that we had sometime the week and a half before, remember the next day after prices dropped, we had news that over the last 24 hours, Wales had accumulated an additional 90,000 Bitcoin. BBVA Switzerland is the largest or the latest bank to enter the cryptocurrency space. Today, they announced that their digital service will be open on the 21st of June. That is today. It's for its private banking clients interested in digital asset investments. And I don't have to read anymore because it's usually just them patting themselves on the back saying, hey, we got into crypto. It's a great asset class, yada, 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 yada. Another Switzerland bank uh, getting into the cryptocurrency space. No one should be surprised because this keeps happening over and over. I believe this is the actual uh, press release, if you will, on their website. BBVA Switzerland opens Bitcoin trading services to all private banking clients. And also keep this in mind as well. Uh, every single time that one of these banks opens up uh, crypto trading, it's always to the wealthiest people. For those of you who were here in 2018 and 2019, we are seeing the beginning of what I said will happen. And, and this isn't anything revolutionary. I'm not a psychic. It's just complete logic. All these banks are offering Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, trading services, and custody to the richest people on the planet, and it will be this way for another year, year and a half. When their clients are full, and they've had enough, and all that's left are scraps of Satoshis, that's when it'll be offered to you, to your mother, aunt, uncle, sister, and brother as they walk into an actual normal bank. Why is every single bank on the planet not only offering crypto services, but only offering it to their private wealthiest clients? Why is it that every single time that we get some type of an indication uh, or, or the, remember all the leaked information that we kept on getting from all the banks as to where Bitcoin was going to go? Those were emails and PDFs that were only reserved for their private clients. So anyway, that's the another bank is getting into crypto news. And let's move on. Next up, in something that I thought was a little weird and I was kind of like, okay, uh, at an exposition... Uh, Beijing-based mining hardware giant Bitmain has released a new mining machine designed just for Dogecoin and Litecoin. I assume you can do with with other coins as well, but this seems to be exclusively for Dogecoin and Litecoin. This is according to a tweet by blockchain journalist Colin Wu. Uh, the thing that kind of took me aback uh, was, <laughs> was that the price will be $15,000. So, yeah, you know, if you got a couple million just laying around and you're just hankering for some Dogecoin. This might be the thing for you. I only added this in because I thought it was fascinating that, you know, they created this exclusively to like really be able to mine Dogecoin and Litecoin. And then it has the nerve to be $15,000. So, yeah. And to finish things off. The Bank of Uganda has announced the launch of a regulatory sandbox that will allow fintech startups to test their innovative financial solutions in a controlled environment. 
already one firm ms wave transfer limited okay has received approval to test its quick response qr technology under this sandbox arrangement in a statement on the 15th of june the bank of uganda says it is now inviting more firms to develop and sim to similarly to test their innov innovations under this framework Meanwhile, the BOU statement also expanded on why the central bank has chosen to launch the sandboxes for control. Uh, the statement explains. So uh, without, once again, having to really go too deep into this, uh, this is something that a lot of other countries have also tried to do. They realized that they once again cannot control the transactions of uh, Bitcoin and any other coin. However, any new company who is looking uh, to get into the space, especially inside of their country, well, you can do it. Just make sure that we know exactly what you're doing at all times. That's why it's called the sandbox. Imagine you're sitting at a park. Your child is in the sandbox. You can see exactly where your child is and what they're doing. Kind of the same exact thing is usually a like a three to five block designated area where uh, it's nothing but fintech companies and cryptocurrency and blockchain firms and everything that they do, uh, they have to report to you. So the the good news is, is that they don't ban crypto. It's more of a uh, just tell us what you're doing. But it's still this really weird, like, we have to make sure that we have control over everything kind of thing. But I think that's just how uh, things would probably be forever. As, as long as we have a N above us, there will always be a, a layer of someone trying to get control. Very weird news day, I know. Um, I like to make sure that everyone knows exactly explicitly why the market is down, why the market dropped and everything that's going on. I know it's very annoying. I know it's very confusing even as well that this keeps on happening over and over, but this is all coordinated. None of this is, is random. They're not simply saying, you know, oh gosh, we, we released the news on the same day. Guys, what are you doing? That was my news day. No, they're trying to lower the prices on purpose. This is the same exact thing. Why think about the, the timing of this as well. We had seven countries a week and a half ago who all announced that they were going to try and get into the cryptocurrency space. The, the larger banks, the larger countries, the ones who impose sanctions, don't want the, 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 the underlings, the other smaller countries, to have any type of autonomy. H how do we control you? We control you by making sure that you use the U.S. dollar, that when you do something wrong and you step out of line, well, we sanction you. And you have to pay us more money and you're constantly even further in debt. But what happens when you can't do that anymore? What happens when a country is just its own? So, yeah. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from GunBot University. Roman Geba. Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealer's Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way, Lay Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carl Who's Like, Mol Barazi, Jojo Shasho, VBNR21, Miguel Grohl, Lay Lauren, Silva, Quota Bitty, Bare Bones, Mining Troy, All Good, Space Casey, The Miracle, Pat Turn, Nasser, Conan, Noska, Black Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banana, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila The Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Adam Arita, Bibliophobia, Todd Mollis, Adam Grasic, Mohan Maroni, Massive Ventures in Thailand, Jared Sider, Wise Knight, Owl242 to the World, Bank Roll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Damien Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Manji, Alavori, Jim Gardner, Jamie Fox, Minton Coins, Miller, Hitch Test, Everyday, and Kowski, Plug Day. Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> love that. Any time fitness, Moss Corner staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macha, Nisa, All Crypto with Lionel, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bostos. Thank you all. Very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone. Wow. Everyone. Everyone who is a new Patreon member. Thank you to everyone who is a uh, member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who left a like, who left a comment, who is a clicker of affiliate links. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the memento, Bitcoin is at 32,328 US dollars. It is down by 8.29%. Ethereum has just broken below. $2,000. And I will say this as a little mini side joke as well. Uh, I had more than a handful of people in the comment section uh, announcing last week, oh no, I wish prices would dip again further so that I have an opportunity to buy. Well, here you go. I had a lot of people. I always have that. Every time prices go back up, I go, oh no, I wish prices were lower so I could buy. Well, look at the screen. Uh, they are low. So now might be your time to get into the market. No anomalies, I think. I think the the magnet on this one is way too strong. Uh, we might see a continued downtrend as the day goes along and people wake up and they also start panic selling. But who knows where things will go. I do hope that you all enjoyed as best you could. I know the news isn't the greatest to start off the week, but it is what it is. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again 
for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly uh, be talking uh, to you all soon. See you.